In this video, we're going to learn about how to use regular expressions in JavaScript to validate uh, the file upload to make sure that when a file is uploaded, it has the right extension and that one has actually been uploaded. So to do this, we are going to know about this. We want to make sure that this is, file is uploaded when it's submitted. So we're going to set it up with, we want to add these event listeners when the event listener uh, on load, right? So we want to add this when the page is loaded. And I'm just going to do an anonymous function here. And so all these event listeners that I'm going to add will happen. Uh, when it loads. And I want to validate when the submit button is clicked. All right, so to do that, we're going to need to get that get element by ID. We need to get that submit button and its ID is set to submit, so I'm going to get that. And we're going to add an event listener here. And we want that, e the event that we're looking for is the click event. And I'm going to do another anonymous function here that will respond when that event is clicked. All right, now I want to stop. Before I go much further, I want to make sure I've got everything connected. So I'm just going to simply do an alert here that says submit button clicked and see if we're working. Okay, so I'm going to save that and reload and click on this. Oh, and it's submitted, but I didn't get an alert button. So I need to figure out why this isn't working. So um, I've got it on load. I have a function here. I've got it on click and a function there. So let's go look in here. Oh, and what I'm missing are, are my script tags. Uh, are my, is my script tag connected? So I need to make sure that I've connected my script tag, right? My external script file with my HTML. All right, let's go test it now. And sure it is, there's that alert. So good idea to just keep in touch that things are working, right? You want to know that before you go too far. So I'm going to comment that out because I don't need it anymore. Now I know that the event listener on load is working. I know the event listener on click is working. Now what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to test that the resume file been uploaded uh, has been selected is really what we're testing and is the right is correct file type. Okay, so we're going to ask some questions. We're going to go get um, that file name, right? So I'm going to create a variable that is the file name and say it equals. And what I can do to get the file name is I can go to this element, this resume element right there, and get its value. And its value will be that file name. So I need to go find out what that is. So if I go in here and I find that button that gets the resume, all right, so there's a button with the resume. And its ID is resume. So um, I can go ahead and access that, right? Document dot get element by ID and its resume. And its value will tell me that file name. So once I get that file name, then I can ask several questions about it. If there is no file name, if it, if it hasn't been uploaded, then that file name will be equal to the empty string. All right, so it'll exist, but it'll be empty if it hasn't been uploaded. So if it's empty, then we want to write a message that it hasn't been uploaded. And it's like, no, you've got to upload this resume file or we're not gonna accept your application. So we need a place to write this message. 
So we want to write it right here. So if we go in our code where that resume button is, so right here is where that resume button is, that file button is. So right there in that same paragraph, right after that, I'm going to add a span tag. And I want to be able to access it with JavaScript to be able to write to it. So I'm going to write ID equals and give it an ID that I can access. I'm going to call this resume message. And then I'll have it there to be able to write to. So I can say, OK, if it isn't there, then I want to go get that uh, resume message. And I want to write something to it. So I'm going to use inner HTML to write to it and say, uh, you must, or just must, upload a resume file. All right, let's go see if this works. So if we reload, uh, and then we say, okay, let's go down and check, submit application, oh, and it's submitted. So we can't tell whether it wrote a message or not because it's submitted so fast. So what we need to do is we need to be able to stop that submit from happening when there's a problem. Well, there's going to be several different things we're going to test for. So I'm going to make this variable available to the entire function. And so I'm going to, I'm going to define it up here at the top. And it's simply going to be a message that's going to keep track of whether there's an error or not. Well, when this first function starts, there is not an error. So I'm going to call, I'm going to set this to false when that function first starts. And then if there is an error, so in this case, we've found an error, right? They've clicked the submit button and there was the file name was empty. So there hadn't been one uploaded. So I'm going to set error equal to true in here. Now notice that these values for true and false uh, are, don't have quotes around. These are not strings. These are actual keywords that represent the value false and the value true. So I want to make sure and not put those in quotes that they're actual values for that. And then down here at the very end, what I want to do is I want to test for that. And if there is an error, right, if that error value is true, then I want to stop the submit from happening. And the way that I can do that is say, notice that this click event is happening on the submit button, right? And So since I'm clicking on the submit button, uh, that event that comes is that click on that submit button. And I want to capture that. So I'm going to add event to the parameter. And that event is automatically set, sent uh, when this function is called on the click. So now I can use that event to say, if there's an error, I want you to stop that event from happening. And the way that I do that is with a function that's called prevent default. And this is a function call, so I need the parentheses. And what this does is it prevents the default action of this event. So the default back action of a click on a submit button is that it submits the form. It does that without us telling it to do it at all. That's what makes it the default, is we don't have to code that in. By default, when you click a submit button, it submits the form. So we want to stop that to happen only when there's an error, right? So if we go ahead and choose a file, and we upload a PDF, and we submit, there's no problem. It just uploads, all right? But if, on the other hand, if I try to submit when there hasn't been a resume open, and I click Submit, notice I'm clicking, clicking, clicking. Nothing's happening. It's, we've, it comes in here. It says the file name is equal to nothing. It sets that error to true, so when it gets here, that's true, and it prevents that default from happening. Now let's check and see if it did the other thing, which is to write this must upload a resume file. So we go back up here, and sure enough, there's must upload a resume file. Now notice that I coded this to be red. I was able to do that in the CSS. Now what I did is I said, okay, anytime we have a span tag, add it, put this color in here. And so make the text red so it really stands out. That's important so that it doesn't just blend in. You want that error message to stand out. All right. So now it will stop it from happening when there is a, when they haven't submitted a file. Well, now we also want to check and see if 
what they submitted is correct if it is a .jpg or a .pdf file. So to do this one, I'm going to define a pattern and use uh, regular expressions. So regular expressions start and end with this, and in here I put the regular expression. So what I'm looking for this is I'm looking for any character, uh, and I can use that dot to be any character. It represent it could be any character except for um, the carriage return. So a character, and then in fact it can be any n number of characters, right? Because the file name can be long or short, and we don't care how long or short it is. It needs to have at least one character, so I'm going to use the quantifier that means one or more, and that is the plus sign. So I, this says that we want one or more characters, and then we want to follow up by the dot, right? Because it's going to be dot JPEG or dot PDF. But remember that this has special meaning. The dot has special meaning, right? It means any character. Well, we want it to represent the actual dot character. So I have to use the escape character, which is a backslash, to say, no, I want a dot, right? So don't use it, the dot special meaning. I want you to actually use the dot itself. Okay, so now what I've said is some number of characters, one or more characters, followed by an actual dot, and then I want it to be followed by PDF, or, remember how we do an or is with the pipe, JPEG, right? And that's what I want. But I, if I just leave the or here, it's going to be everything on this side or this, and I don't want that. The or really only goes this far. So I'm going to use parentheses to clarify where the or part is because every one I want one or more characters followed by a dot, and then I want PDF or JPEG. Now I want this to be case insensitive because I don't care whether these file extensions are uppercase or lowercase. So the way to do that is I can simply add um, a flag, right? And I just use that I, and that's the flag. Okay, and that's the end of my pattern, and that makes it case insensitive. Now I can ask the question, well, if it's not empty, then I want to consider else if. I want to check if it's empty first, but if it's not empty, then I want it to see if it matches this pattern. So the way to do this, the JavaScript function is a function that goes with this pattern. So I do pattern, and by the way, I'm using the file name pattern, but I can use any, I mean the variable name pattern, because it's meaningful, and it's a good idea to use meaningful variable names. But it doesn't have to be pattern. It can be, it truly is just a variable name. So I want to do pattern.test, and what test is, is a function that returns true if there's a match found, and false if there's not. So what I want to send this function is the string that I want to look for the match in. So I want to look for the match in um, the file name. right? I want to see if the file name has this pattern in it. And so I'm going to send it the file name to have it test. If there's a match in here, then everything's good, right? And if everything's good, then I don't want document dot get element by ID. I want that span uh, to be nothing. Resume message. Okay, dot inner HTML. I want it to be equal to the empty string because everything's fine, right? If it finds that match, then everything's fine. So this condition tests if it's empty. Well, let's go ahead and test this. Okay, so we've tested the one, so let's go ahead and test the next. All right, so now what we're testing for is if they choose a file that has JPEG, even if it's, right, that has a couple caps in it, so it should test our submit the application, and everything was fine. So it submitted, right? Notice that in this case, we did not have an error. We didn't set error to true, so when it got here, error was false, and it didn't prevent that default happening. So it looks like this is working fine for right now. Uh, we could probably check the PDF, too. So to test that, we just uh, go back up here and choose a file that has a PDF extension. There's one, and we submit, and it works. Okay.
So we have it doing it the right thing when it, it when it submits and when it's empty. The last thing we have is when it doesn't have it find a match. So if it's empty, it'll do this section. If it finds a match, it will do this section. The only thing left is if there's something there and it doesn't match. So at this point, I can give it a different message, right? I can notice how I can really uh, make these messages be exactly what I want them to be because I'm really asking the right questions. And so then I can make my messages fit. It says the file must be uh, a PDF or .jpg. Okay, and so then that matches. So let's go ahead and see if we can test this part. All right, so for the resume, if we choose and we say, okay, so this .j, let's see if that .j will work. And, oh, it submitted the form. What did we do? We forgot to set the error right here. So let's go ahead and say error equals true. And reload. And try again. So let's choose one that doesn't match. Okay, that's not correct. Let's see if our regular expression caught it. Okay, it didn't submit, so our error worked. And there's our message. The file must be a PDF or a JPEG. Now we're not quite there yet. Uh, let's go ahead and choose one other file. So notice here what I've got is JPEG2. And let's test this one. Ah, and it submitted it. So notice that that wasn't quite right, right? It's JPEG2, which isn't what we want. But our regular expression didn't catch that because we said, because it really does have some number, one or more characters. So it does have one or more characters. That's these ones. F Oops, I clicked on it. Let me get that again. So it has one or more characters followed by a dot followed by JPG. And we told, and it found that pattern. It found that pattern in there. But what we want to say is, oh, but the JPG or the PDF is the end, right? We need to assert that this is happening at the end of the string. So the way to do that is to use that um, the end character. So we need to assert it with that dollar sign to say that it is at the end. Okay, so let's go ahead and say that and see if that works. And select that JPEG2 that isn't quite right, but it has the pattern in there, but then it has something else on the end. And we click submit. Okay, it didn't submit, that's a good sign. And there's our message. The file must be a .pdf or .jpeg, and it's not, so it caught that. Let's see if it can catch, if it lets the PDF go through. Sure enough, it let that go, and there it is showing up there. And let's see if it gets a mistaken PDF. There's a PDF A, if it will catch that, and sure enough, it's not submitting, and it's producing that error. All right, so we have been able to validate that this file upload um, happened and that it has exactly the right 